France just hosted a quiet but important milestone in Europe's race for ship-ready unmanned aviation. Schiebel has completed the first flight test campaign of its next-generation camcopter S300 near Bordeaux, expanding the aircraft's operational envelope and pushing the program past a cumulative 100 flight hours. On paper, that sounds like routine development work. In reality, it is the kind of incremental progress that separates a concept that looks good at air shows from a system that can survive the unforgiving logic of real military operations, where wind, salt, electromagnetic interference, deck motion and operator workload will punish every shortcut you took during design. So why does France matter here? Because location is strategy. Testing at CISA drones in saint hélène in a military environment is not just about convenient airspace and infrastructure. It is about demonstrating that the S-300 is being matured inside the same institutional ecosystem that will eventually judge it. Military users, military procedures, military expectations. That's a very different test than proving you can fly in ideal conditions with a supportive team and a forgiving schedule. If you want international customers to trust your system, you have to show it can be developed like a military capability, not a tech demo. And Schiebel is clearly leaning into that credibility, highlighting a long-standing relationship with France and the French Navy, plus a local presence through Schiebel Aeronaval SAS. The message is straightforward. This is not a foreign product passing through. It's a program being anchored in a European operational context. Now let's zoom in on what this campaign actually signals. The phrase expanded the operational envelope is easy to gloss over, but it's the heart of the matter. Envelope expansion is where you go looking for the edges, where control laws start to feel different, where stability margins get thin, where gust response becomes unpredictable, where vibration and rotor dynamics reveal themselves, and where the autopilot has to prove it can handle transitions without making the operator babysit the machine. Schiebel says the flights focused on verifying handling qualities, flight control response, and overall system performance. That's developer language for a simple question every military customer cares about. Does it behave like a dependable aircraft or like a project? Because in unmanned rotary wing systems, dependable is not negotiable. A ship doesn't have the luxury of a long runway or a wide diversion area. A deck is small, moving, and busy, and the aircraft needs to be predictable, stable, and recoverable even when conditions are degrading. When Schiebel emphasizes stable and controlled behavior across evaluations, they are not bragging about smooth flying. They are building the argument that the S-300 can become a ship's routine tool, not a special event asset that needs perfect weather and a perfect crew to be safe. And that brings us to the bigger story. The S-300 is being framed as a follow-on to the Camcopter S-100, a platform with extensive operational history. Schiebel points to the S-100's massive global flight hour accumulation and its maritime and land-based usage for surveillance, intelligence, and reconnaissance. That legacy matters because it changes the default level of trust. A military buyer doesn't just purchase performance, they purchase risk reduction. When a manufacturer can say, we have seen what breaks, what users actually do, and how systems fail in the field, it carries more weight than any brochure. But here's the real strategic question. If the S-100 already exists, why push a new S-300? The answer is in the demands that modern conflicts and maritime competition have placed on naval aviation. The surveillance problem has expanded, but ships have not. Warships need organic, persistent eyes and ears beyond the horizon, without burning crew hours, fuel, or putting manned helicopters into avoidable risk. Meanwhile, the sensor and payload requirements keep growing. Better electro-optics, broader area maritime search, signals collection, relay functions, and the ability to carry mission packages that would overwhelm a smaller platform's payload margins. Endurance matters, payload matters, and flexibility matters because the mission isn't one thing anymore. It is coastal monitoring one day, wide area maritime awareness the next, and then escort support, boarding operations overwatch, or disaster response immediately after. Schiebel's stated ambition for the S-300 is exactly in that direction. Increased payload capacity, longer endurance, and greater mission flexibility. Designed for ship operations and austere locations where vertical takeoff and landing is the difference between available and impossible. And in the European context, this is not a niche requirement. European navies operate across congested sea lanes, contested littorals, and increasingly complex hybrid threat environments. The ability to keep a persistent sensor over an area without dedicating a manned helicopter sortie is a force multiplier. It is also a political asset. Better maritime domain awareness means better enforcement, better attribution, and fewer strategic surprises. But let's not romanticize it. The leap from successful test campaign to operational capability is where most programs earn their scars. Flight testing that verifies handling and system performance is necessary, but it's only the foundation. The next layers are where real complexity lives. 
payload integration and power management, communications, resilience, and latency, autonomous recovery logic, navigation in GNSS denied or degraded conditions, and the aircraft's behavior when the battle space is actively trying to confuse it. In other words, it's not just about flying, it's about flying when the environment is hostile, electromagnetically, meteorologically, and operationally. And then there's the human side, the factor that often decides whether a system becomes a daily tool or a hangar queen. How much cognitive workload does it impose on the crew? How many personnel does it demand? How quickly can a ship launch it, recover it, refuel it, and turn it around? How forgiving is it when procedures are followed under stress rather than in a calm test setting? This is why military environment matters. It is an early step towards shaping the program around real users, not ideal users. A system that is technically capable but operationally awkward will lose out to something less ambitious but easier to employ. So is this France campaign a turning point? It's not a finish line, but it is a statement of trajectory. Reaching 100 cumulative flight hours and expanding the envelope suggests the program is moving beyond first flights and into the disciplined, iterative work of maturation. For military customers, that's often the moment when attention shifts from can it fly to can it become routine? Because routine is where value is extracted. The platform that launches reliably, lands safely, and delivers usable sensor products day after day will matter more than the one that promises the most impressive performance in a narrow set of conditions. There is also a competitive logic in timing. The demand signal for unmanned maritime ISR has been reinforced by real-world events. Ships want longer reach without more risk, and they want it now, not in the distant future. If Shebel can translate S-100 credibility into S-300 capability and prove it through disciplined testing in places like France, the S-300 becomes more than a new aircraft. It becomes an argument that Europe can field scalable, ship-compatible, unmanned aviation without waiting for a perfect, all-encompassing solution that arrives too late. And that leaves us with the question that matters most. When a naval commander looks at the S-300, will they see a promising prototype or a dependable extension of the ship's sensor horizon? France hosting the next phase is one piece of that answer. The envelope expansion and system verification are another. The rest will be decided where it always is, at sea in rough weather under imperfect conditions when the crew has other priorities and the aircraft still has to work. If the S-300 can meet that standard, then this routine test campaign near Bordeaux may be remembered as one of the moments when unmanned rotary wing aviation stopped being an accessory and became a baseline capability.